Throughout the numerous settings and backgrounds in Bleach, there is one that stands above all in importance. In the manga, author Taite Kubo likes to portray his characters with no background to emphasize their features, but there is one setting he often employs in various backgrounds to bring more life into the scene, with that of course being the rain. Kubo has shown us masterful symbolism in Bleach through the rain. The rain has a massive part to play in regards to the characters of Bleach, more so than most may think. Through this video, we will discuss just how important rain is to the series. If you are a fan of Bleach, you may have noticed some symbolism regarding the rain, mainly through Ichigo, Old Man Zangetsu and other characters as well. But what exactly does the rain represent and why? Let's explore the implications of the rain and follow that with some instances that the rain appears in Bleach. For many in the past, the rain was a blessing. It is a gift for life, especially for farmers who relied on it to nourish their crops. At times, whether it rained or not would make or break an individual, a family, or a whole community. There is a calm tranquility to the rain. It is very calming and soothing for many. Some find absolute joy in the rain, dancing in it, and for others it helps them sleep putting them in ease and even put some into deep meditative states. However, in most cases of fiction, rain is used to symbolize negative states and emotions. In Bleach, it is no different when it comes to the various characters of the series. There is a depressing and dangerous side to the rain. At times, lightning and thunder accompany it, which could be fatal and terrifying to some. Furthermore, there is usually no sun to be seen when it rains, which is undoubtedly dispiriting. It brings about the darkness of the night, which is usually unfavorable compared to the day's light. The gloomy and dark nature of the rain is often tied with sorrow, depression, grief, and other negative connotations. For many, that is how they view the rain, and that is how it usually is perceived in fiction. In Bleach's case, especially through the lens of its main character Ichigo, the rain is synonymous with the negative emotions mentioned earlier, but more particularly, despair and his inability to do anything to help others. You could argue that Ichigo's main battles throughout Bleach are with his despair, his helplessness, and the rain is often used to represent the accumulation of those feelings slash traits. In a sense, the droplets of rain symbolize these negative emotions, and an influx of them are represented through a torrential downpour. A clear and sunny day represents the lack of negative emotions and thoughts whereas a flood symbolizes the complete takeover of these thoughts for a long period of time. There are two instances in Bleach where the rain is portrayed for Ichigo. One is through the real world, and the other is through his inner world, one of which is the material world and the other his spiritual world. Ichigo is undoubtedly tied to the rain, as for him, it is synonymous with both of these worlds. You can say that throughout Bleach, the rain has been watching over Ichigo in most of his trying times, in his darkest of moments, whether it be crushing defeat, the fear of an upcoming battle, or even the flood of negative thoughts and emotions, the rain would accompany him throughout these battles. That said, there are a few other characters in Bleach who also have close ties to the rain. Let's explore the rain chronologically in both the real world and the spiritual world for the characters in Bleach, starting with Ichigo. The first time we see Ichigo with the rain was with the death of his mother in chapter 20. Before the infamous moment, Ichigo would tragically tell his mother, I will protect you from now on. During that day, it rained. Before that day, it rained. And the day before, it rained as well, as if it was some sort of dark omen. That very day, Ichigo would naively try to save a girl standing near a river, as he thought she was going to jump in. The boy who wanted nothing more than to protect his family and those around him would rush recklessly towards her. Despite his mother's warnings, shortly after, he would wake up grasping his deceased mother who had been cut and somehow killed. Ichigo did not know how his mother died. This whole time he took the burden on himself, believing that it was his fault. The boy who wanted to protect his mother had failed and this left a black hole in his heart. Despite that, Ichigo did not know that it was a result of Yuha's Ashwellen, which stole Masai Masaki's powers, allowing for the Grand Fisher who posed as the girl to kill Masaki. When it rains, it pours. And that day was no different. The young boy had his first taste of the harsh, unforgiving rain, all of it accompanying the anguish and grief of losing his mother. But it would not end there. Ten years later, Ichigo would come across the very hollow that took his mother's life, revitalizing the very memories of the rain. In a heartfelt battle, he would sustain wound after wound, many seeming to be fatal. 
To add insult to injury, the Grand Fisher would play his trump card and bring back a corpse to resemble Ichigo's mother. All the while, the rain would fall, accompanied by the splatter of Ichigo's blood. The same feelings, the memory of the rain was drilled into Ichigo's mind and so it had become symbolic of his despair. All of this also reminded someone else of the rain, a person who had her own history with it. More on this later. The rain would continue soon after, when Rukia was abducted and taken back to the Soul Society. Ichigo would fight bravely against Lieutenant Renji Abarai, only to get displaced in a split second by Rukia's adopted brother Byakuya Kuchiki. Just like that, Ichigo would lose his powers. The one thing that relieved that sense of not being able to do anything to protect his loved ones. Each time it rained, Ichigo was met with hardships. The feeling of being able to do nothing, chaining him up, weighing him down, and drowning him in the rain. In the anguish of defeat, the rain would splatter through the sad emotions of not being able to protect the ones he cares about. Last time, it was his mother, and now it was Rukia. Just as he sunk deeper into despair, he would sink deeper into a pool of rain tinged with his blood. While we have seen the rain show up in the world of Bleach a few times up to this point, it also had an effect on Ichigo's inner world. When Ichigo was being drenched by the rain, his inner world would be what soaked it up. Even when in sunshine in the real world, Ichigo's inner world slowly accumulates rain. When Ichigo is overcome with fear, grief, despair, and so on, his inner world becomes flooded. This, in a sense, is a sign that those negative thoughts and emotions have been occupying his mind and prevailing over the positive ones, thus taking the form of a flood. That said, we don't see it raining in his inner world, rather, we see the aftermath of it. In a sense, it always rains in the real world, but his inner world is where it accumulates. It probably rains in his inner world too based on what we learn from a certain speech, but this rain sticks around, and that is why in times of grief and despair, his world becomes flooded. In Ichigo's mind, in his deep subconscious, the rain could have been synonymous with catastrophe, as his mother died during it at a young age. It could have been that this moment scarred him so much that, whenever he feels similar emotions, it rains in his mind as well as in the real world. This is where we see the infamous speech of old man Zangetsu, who states his distaste for the rain. Being the manifestation of Ichigo's Quincy powers, Zangetsu sees the rain in the same way as Ichigo, except that he has a better understanding of the rain. He experiences the effects of it head on in Ichigo's inner world. He understands what happens when Ichigo is taken over by negative emotions, whereas Ichigo does not fully understand the effects of it. The next time we are met with the rain is in Waco Mundo of all places. Except this rain was different. This rain wasn't summoned by the bitter taste of defeat and humiliation, but rather it was fear. Fear that no matter what Ichigo does, he wouldn't be able to not only succeed in protecting others, but survive this encounter. Despair soaked with incredibly low confidence, lack of faith, and uncertainty. As a grizzled veteran of the rain, this must have been the scariest sight for Ichigo. Seeing the man who pretty much killed him transform into a more sinister and menacing monster, all the while summoning the gruesome green rain with everything that it represents. After being defeated so easily by Ukiora before the second transformation, this rain was fitting as it showed the fear, the helplessness, the drying up of Ichigo's last shreds of hope as the terror of Ukiora stood high above him in front of the glimmering moon of Waco Mundo to pierce the moon, to reach the heavens. This is what Ichigo would have to go through and without the intervention of perhaps his greatest ally, he never would have made it. Despite facing someone who almost ended him twice, things would not get easier for the boy brought up in the rain. Against Aizen, Ichigo would once again begin to lose all hopes of victory and understandably so, all the rain and all the trials were not enough to prepare him for the one who sought to reign supreme above all. He had never fought a skilled, cunning villain like this, and he probably never will. With some assistance from Ishin in the Dangai, Ichigo would seek asylum in his inner world once more and discover where the rain has been going all along. The once skyscrapers that sought to pierce the heavens were reduced to a flooded version of his town. All because he had lost hope, his despair and helplessness had reached a level where they towered over all other emotions and thoughts. Although the rain no longer splattered, 
The storm left a massive flood, all because he couldn't keep his mind in check and release all that negativity. Ichigo himself understood this after conversing with the keepers of this world, and it was from there that he gained tremendous growth, accepting his soul's blade, through it gaining incredible power. However, this came at a dreadful cost, with him losing the very powers that allowed him to influence the wheel of fate. Throughout all the storms Ichigo had overcome, and all the terrifying enemies he had come across in battle, you would think nothing could harm him now, and the rain could no longer hurt him. But the worst was yet to come. A methodical group would seek to strike Ichigo where it hurt the most, by going after his loved ones. Little by little, Ichigo was isolated, until he had lost the majority of those he cared for the most. Ichigo's main purpose was to protect his loved ones, and now, without his powers, he could no longer do that. Worst of all, through execution scheming, his family and friends were growing further apart from him. We see Ichigo losing the small glimmer of hope he had in being an adept guardian to Ginjo and Shukushima. In absolute shambles, at rock bottom, Ichigo would fall to his knees and break down like never before, and the rain accompanied his tears. We rarely see Ichigo breaking down, but when he did, it was when he no longer had access to his inner world. When he lost his Soul Reaper powers, he could no longer converse with Zangetsu and White, who pretty much kept Ichigo in check in his times of need. The rain had been accumulating in Ichigo during this time. All the suffering, grief, and despair locked within him started to overflow when it seemed he had lost everything to Ginjo and Shukushima. Tears, in a sense, are the overflow of negative emotions. It's a way to purge them from your inner world. Ichigo's inner world was flooded no doubt, and the flood was just getting worse. It was when we saw the tears overflowing from Ichigo that his inner world could no longer contain the flood. The skies would weep alongside Ichigo and it would eventually stop with a familiar face. Someone who would often serve as the key piece in relieving Ichigo's burden of the rain. More of which I will discuss after finishing Ichigo's tale with the rain. The rain accompanied Ichigo in his most trying time. And the same would happen in the Soul Society's most trying time, where we would see the rain as well as Ichigo's arrival to it. I have a whole video talking about Ichigo's arrival and the significance of the Protect the Soul Society moment, so check that out if you're interested. This moment showed us how Ichigo had grown and matured over the years. The rain no longer brought him to his knees. No, it invigorated him. It served as the fuel for the flame of his soul. After seeing the carnage set upon his comrades, after seeing the bloodbath the Soul Society was plunged into, those same feelings and thoughts would rise up once again, along with the rain. But this time, the rain surrounding Ichigo would ignite and disperse, for the fire inside him was far stronger than the raging storm on the outside. The rain would make a few appearances in the first Thousand Year Blood War invasion, and we will see another appearance with Ichigo. Ichigo's inner flame would be knocked out of equilibrium shortly after. The fire was dispersed and the rain would continue to fall after a massive revelation for Ichigo. Ichigo's heart would drown deep into despair after learning the truth of his forsaken blood. The bitter rain would burn after he found out why nothing could be explained in the past. With old man Zangetsu, the one who he thought cared for him the most was in fact the enemy all along. The rain coming down with the twisted music was perfection. With the music, it indirectly tied the mysterious man in Ichigo's mind who hated the rain to the monster in front of him. The same monster who started Ichigo's bitter tale of the rain with the death of his mother. As Yuha would take his leave, he would refer to Ichigo as son born in the dark because he knew nothing about his Quincy heritage and his connection to Yuha. With the Thousand Year Blood War, we found out that Zangetsu was the manifestation of Ichigo's Quincy powers, which is why he resembled a younger Yuha Baha. With that in mind, could the hate of the rain have originated from Yuha instead of Ichigo's past? Perhaps Yuha has a past with the rain as well. Only time will tell if we ever get to learn of Yuha's past, and maybe we will learn more of it through old man Zangetsu. When Ichigo was sent back to Karakura town without a Zanpakuto, the rain was pouring and no wonder. Ichigo had lost the connection to his soul once again. It was at this moment that Ichigo had to confront the past with his father, something they had put off for far too long. After learning of his past, the rain would stop pouring. The rain would show up once again once Ichigo would confront the mysterious spirit in his soul, clad in his signature shadowy black. 
The second Ichigo would scream his given name, Zongetsu, the rain would splatter instantly, as if it truly pained both of them to have this encounter. Old man Zongetsu would sever the building they were on top of, and submerge both of them in the flood. This is where Ichigo found the truth about the old shadowy figure he had known as Zongetsu. It was from the depths of his soul that Ichigo would have to confront his own demons to come out a better man. Zongetsu would take his leave, with one of his eyes affixed on Ichigo in the lonely flooded rain he hated so much and the other side fixated towards the heavens the free-flowing blue skies that Ichigo was meant for after learning about the hidden past of his lineage the rain stopped for Ichigo it was a burden that was lifted because he understood more about who he was and what he had to do he would have to climb out of the flooded abyss and make his way towards the skies to claim his Zanpakuto once again with enough power to evaporate the sea he would imprint his soul onto his new blades the residue of the rain had strengthened the hero, and now it was just a mere obstacle for him to rid. For Ichigo, it was not the little splatters of the rain that brought upon epiphanies and massive growth. It was being drowned in the abyss of the rain, and coming out of it that did. We saw that multiple times with Old Man Zongetsu and White. The flooded areas in Ichigo's inner world represent deep areas in the subconscious that are undiscovered, areas that are warped in pain and negative emotions. It was Ichigo's trips to his inner world that gave him clarity and strength and the same can be done with all of us to understand yourself and have such dialogues with your inner being as Ichigo did with his spiritual manifestations will get rid of much suffering and help you rise to become a better being you don't need a spiritual manifestation of yourself to do this through a deep understanding of yourself through deep meditation and contemplation you too can make progress just like what we saw with Ichigo maybe I'll explore more of this in another video since this is off topic to sum things up, out of every character in Bleach, it is Ichigo who has the strongest connection with the rain. Ichigo is the one who was showered in it the most. For that reason, I think it will be cool if Ichigo's true powers, once revealed, had something to do with the rain. Perhaps summoning it once he goes into a true Bankai or some other ability of his. With the rain, of course, representing all the struggles he has gone through, reminding him of all the despair that died and ultimately strengthened his soul. I think including the rain in a Zanpakuto release command for a new form would be a cool thing to do. Maybe be let it rain Zongetsu or stop the rain Zongetsu or whatever his true name is. His current release command and abilities all have to do with the moon and so all of that is probably not going to happen but I think it would be a cool addition to somehow incorporate. It would be a grim and fitting introduction for his enemies and a terrifying sight for them to witness the day that the rain had finally become a direct ally of Ichigo. With the rain comes a reminder of all that he has overcome and conquered so that he can destroy the wheel that governs fate. I can think of no one better to have the ability to call upon the rain than Ichigo, the rain's greatest soldier, the champion of the rain. With all that said, the rain doesn't stop with Ichigo. Many other characters were indoctrinated by the rain in Bleach. Rukia is someone with an affinity for those in the rain, as she has been in it herself. She played a vital part in assisting Ichigo to navigate the harsh terrain of the rain, because she was exposed to it before Ichigo. Rukia would get baptized by rain and blood through the death of her mentor and friend, the one most closely related to Ichigo, Kayan Shiba. Kayan would engage in a battle to the death with the wicked hollow who slew his wife. In doing so, Ukitake and Rukia let him fight on so that his honor would remain. Kayan would eventually get infected by the hollow, and it would take complete control over him. In an impossible situation, Rukia would have to do the one thing she would never want to do, and slay her comrade. The second Rukia stabbed Kayan, and his blood splattered all over her, tears began to flow, and it was followed by the rain. Kayan is the closest thing to Ichigo in the series. Both are of noble Shiba blood, and Ichigo's looks and his demeanor are very similar to Kayan. This explains why Rukia was drawn towards Ichigo as well as why many others were as well in the Soul Society arc. The loss of Kai and Shiba was a moment that hopelessly stuck with Rukia. She would lament this incident for the rest of her life, similar to how Ichigo would carry the burden of his mother's death in his first encounter of the rain. In a sense, both Ichigo and Rukia were victims of the rain. They both have bared the brunt of it. And that is why Rukia is able to snap Ichigo out of his despair more so than anyone else because she has experienced it firsthand and understood what it meant to be there. Kayan was Rukia's mentor and she felt incredible guilt having killed him after he was taken over by the Hollow. Then suddenly, she would find a man who looked exactly like him, a man who reminded her exactly of Kayan. 
and he would endure many bitter struggles. To atone for the killing of Cayenne in her mind, she would seek to guide this boy just like how Cayenne did to her. In a way, Rukia was like a big sister, a very old sister from the rain to Ichigo. They were comrades of the rain. Rukia was Ichigo's trusty guide to the rain. Again, it was sort of like Rukia was to Ichigo what Cayenne was to her. The fact that Cayenne and Ichigo looked like each other and were a part of the same lineage adds to that. As the series would go on, both Ichigo and Rukia served as antidote to each other's despair. Both would save each other in their time of need. Ichigo would do the unthinkable and invade the Soul Society along with his gang. They would take on ferocious enemies and despite all odds, save Rukia. From then on, and even before that, Rukia would sometimes be the sole key to the chains of Ichigo's despair. She would be the only one to bring him out of the rain, Ichigo's drowning despair. We see this with Ichigo gaining his powers from Rukia, and Rukia serving as his guide at the start. Even when Ichigo would be seemingly drowned in the rain. She would be watching, supporting him whenever she can. Even when all seemed to be lost with Ichigo and he was at a rainy rock bottom, it would be none other than Rukia who would stab him with a spiritual sword, giving him powers once again and ending the dark torrential rain. It rained when Ichigo lost his powers against Ginjo and Tsukushima and it stopped when Rukia came back. Literally, Ichigo has said this before in the series, that the rain stopped with Rukia. This all can be further symbolized through poems by Kubo on the two characters. The rain drags black sun down, but the rain dried by white moon. These poems of course allude to the characters as stated, with Ichigo being the black sun, being dragged by the rain, his negative states and emotions, and Rukia being the white moon, drying it or freezing it up and being the antidote to his despair and other negative states. Ichigo fits well with the black sun as an erratically growing seed of chaos. It also fits well because of his mother. Masaki was often compared to the sun through her cheerful demeanor, and Kubo would compare her to one through a poem with Ishin. The sun is a star that is in the middle of the universe and all planets gravitate around it. That is what Masaki was to her family and after her death, it was Ichigo who took on a heavy burden of it. With Ichigo grieving the loss of his mother, he would try to take her place symbolically by doing whatever he can to protect his family. And that is seen through the black sun, which is what Ichigo is referring to. The sun was now missing and Ichigo, who felt the guilt of not saving the sun, sought to replace it carrying along with him the despair and grief, which is represented through the hollow black version of the sun, the hollow black sun. In general, Ichigo often finds himself in self-doubt, despair, and other negative states, which are represented through the black, whereas Rukia is the more cheerful and positive one, which is symbolized through the white. It is further symbolized through their bankai forms, with Ichigo clad in black and Rukia adorned in white. The white moon represents Rukia well, with her powers being more tied to a white moon, as well as Rukia being an agent for order, the opposite to Ichigo's chaos. As a soul reaper, Rukia brings harmony and stability within the realms, a good representation of order. As for the hybrid and insanely powerful Ichigo, he brings upon change everywhere he goes, which is characterized as chaos. There is a masculine and feminine aspect there too with black being masculine and white being feminine. The black sun represents the ever raging out of control chaos and the white moon represents the serene nurturing order. The raging black sun is enveloping in chaos, thus it falls to the rain, a possible byproduct of the chaos. Whereas the serene white moon calls upon order and turns the rain into something beautiful and more meaningful. Furthermore, the Kuro in Ichigo's last name Kurosaki stands for black. I am no expert in Japanese nomenclature and so this is based on what I found online. As for Saki, it has a few meanings in blossom, hope, and cape. All of these fit well with him, with cape being something he has in his bankai or perhaps it represents his hidden Quincy side, with Kurosaki also being the last name of his mother. Oman Zangetsu also has a black cape like Ichigo. As for hope, Black Hope sounds like a pretty cool and fitting name for Ichigo, as at times it seemed that was all that he had and needed to succeed. The complete absence of hope is despair, and maybe Black Hope is meant to resemble that, the one thing that Ichigo is constantly fighting against. Finally, Black Blossom also fits well when you consider the rain and the poem. The rain drags the black sun down. The rain and the sun equal blossom. It nourishes, it creates life. In Ichigo's case, Black Blossom could mean growth through darkness, 
blossoming through the dark trials he finds himself in, which is often accompanied by the rain. I also found some sources to say Saki stands for a peninsula, which I'll discuss more of later on whether it is a good fit or not. Again, I don't know the exact meaning of these things, and I'm not sure if Kubo said the exact definition of what things mean, and so all of this could be far from true. Regardless, I did want to go through the different options we had. As for Rukia, it is harder to find translations for her name. The I's and R's are something often interchanged in Japanese, and for that reason, it is believed that her name refers to Lucia or Lucia, which translates into light, further relating to the white moon which shines bright in the night, as well as being the guiding light for Ichigo. Rukia's name also references the Rue plant, which symbolizes regret, a fitting theme for the one who had to slay her friend. The Rue plant is also called Wine Route, or however you say that, which was mentioned in the title of the 16th volume of Bleach, which is where we saw Rukia's backstory. So in a sense, her name stands for both regret and light, with the regret being similar to Ichigo, and the light complementing his dark, the opposite of Ichigo. Both characters, despite having differences and being opposites to each other, still share similarities through regret and rain. The duality of the two characters, the yin and yang, is represented well throughout the series. To summarize, it was the rain that connected the two. Rukia had been through the rain, and she saw Ichigo struggling with it as well. Rukia would seek to stop the rain from hurting Ichigo, not by bringing an umbrella over him, or by getting rid of the rain itself, but by raising him back on his feet when he could no longer stand, so that Ichigo could fight the rain himself and come out even stronger. She would turn the rain into something beautiful, which can be likened to Ichigo's development through his trials. Another character who is similar in this regard would be Kisuke Urahara, though he works in more mysterious ways through the shadows and through others at times. It is Kisuke Urahara who is always watching, looking over Ichigo in the rain more so than Rukia. I won't talk much about Kisuke in this video because he will have his own massive video in the future, so subscribe if you want to see that video. Funny enough, other characters are also connected to Ichigo through the rain. However, not every character views the rain in the same way, with the main one being Orahime. Orahime's perspective of the rain can be best seen through her poem by Kubo. If I were the rain, could I connect with someone's heart, as the rain can unite the eternally separated earth and sky? For Orahime, the rain is used as a connection to others. She doesn't see the rain as something dreadful like the previous characters, but rather, she sees it as a bridge to connect two faraway beings, like the heavens and the sky as mentioned, who in all of eternity never mingle, except through the rain. Through this poem, Orahime likens the suffering represented by the rain to a potential bond between others. Both Ichigo and Orahime have lost the loved ones. They both have had abusive pasts, and the pain from it is something they both understand. It is something that connects them. The rain allows for empathy, a common ground of sorts. It is the suffering that allows you to better understand another. The suffering serves as a bridge in her eyes, especially when it comes to Ichigo the one she cares the most about. The two were far apart, and it was their darkness, the rain that occupied their lives, that ultimately brought them together and led them to the same path. If the rain could connect the heavens and the sky, perhaps it can do the same with two aching hearts, two suffering souls. The rain for Orahime served as a glimpse to Ichigo's soul. She felt his sadness and grief, even if she was not able to fully understand it. Orahime had a few scenes in the rain as well, and it often reminded her of Ichigo. Ichigo's last name, Kurosaki, can also be translated to Black Peninsula, which is a piece of land surrounded by water, further relating to the rain, as if the land was internally drenched by the rain until it was surrounded by water. To go further into Orahime's poem, it mentions the sky, the earth, and the rain. You can assume that Kurosaki can represent the earth, but who is the sky? Well, funny enough, her brother is named Sora, which means the sky. So in a way, you can say that the rain and the despair of the two is what connected each other, with Sora losing the person he cared most about through his passing, and Ichigo seeking to make up for not being able to protect his loved ones, both of which led to Orahime. The confrontation between Ichigo and Hollow Sora was because of Orahime, and so she was the rain in this instance. She connected Ichigo with Sora, the sky with the earth. That is what the rain means for Orahime. 
It is not something negative, but rather a link between two sides that will never have come together. A holy bridge that can connect the furthest of entities. Another way to look at it is that the earth could represent Ichigo, and the heavens would be Rukia, who is from the Soul Society. The previous section showed us that the rain is part of what connects Ichigo and Rukia. And so perhaps Orihime was referring to their connection, and how she would want to be closer to Ichigo just like Rukia. She also mentioned that she envied Rukia for being able to snap Ichigo out of his despair, so it could allude to her envying the rain. Despite her envy earlier on in the series, later we would find out that she would come into her own role in healing Ichigo's despair. And she would do that throughout the series, when Ichigo needed it the most. We would see her bringing Ichigo back to a clear mind against the most terrifying of foes, the Quincy King Yuha Baha. Rukia often gets Ichigo hyped up, ready for combat. She instills him with that indomitable human spirit. But sometimes that spirit is overwhelming. Sometimes that spirit is out of control and will hurt you and do more harm. Sometimes too much energy shows up in the form of anxiety, overthinking and so on. Here it was Orahime who would calm Ichigo down and snap him out of his hysteria. Both Rukia and Orahime play similar roles in Ichigo's ascent, but their roles are different, more of which I will discuss later. The origin of Orahime's name, just like the other characters, also have deep relations with the rain. Orahime's name translates into Weaver Girl. This is a reference to an old Chinese folk tale called The Weaver Girl and the Cowherd. Orihime was a Japanese name for the Weaver Girl, and the story is about two lovers separated by a heavenly river. The Weaver Girl symbolized the star Vega, the Cowherd, Hikoboshi, symbolized the star Altair, and the Heavenly River was said to be the Milky Way. Once a year, on the seventh day of the seventh lunar month, which is marked as Tanabata, a bridge would be formed by a flock of magpies, who took pity on the dejected Orihime after her constant tears. This allowed for both to traverse the Heavenly River and meet each other. However, if it were to rain on that day, the rain would overrun, preventing the bridge from connecting, thus delaying the two from meeting for a year. The rain on this day would be called the Tears of Orihime and Hikoboshi. This is a cool tale because it was a story formulated off what everyone saw from two particular stars in the sky, a poetic interpretation of the galaxy. There are many references between Ichigo and Orihime to this story, but in this case of the rain, it shares the negative connotations. The rain is what kept the two apart, which is different from Orihime's perspective on the rain, and more so fits Ichigo's perspective of it. While the rain in this story kept the two apart, in Bleach, it is the opposite, as it is what brought them together. In a sense, through the folktale, Orihime's tears are what brought the magpies together to form a bridge. So in that perspective, the rain did serve as a bridge to connect the two, if you consider the shedding of tears as rain. On top of that, I remember reading somewhere that in the English translation, Kubo considered to have Orihime's name to be Vega Highwell which is a direct translation of Orihime Inoue. Orihime was based on the star Vega, so that is where her first name is from, and Inoue means above the well, further relating to the rain in a sense, and that is where High Well comes from. We also have this piece that says, as long as I am with you, even the rain is fun. This further shows her perspective of the rain as a bridge to bond with others. Even though the rain is seen as unfavorable, she doesn't let it get to her and tries to make the most out of it. She transmutes it in a way to make things better. To further compare Rukia and Orihime, in my eyes, Rukia is more of a tomboy than Orihime, as we see her beating up Ichigo whenever she can and overall fitting well in his best friend role. As for Orihime, she has more traditionally feminine characteristics, showing more of a nurturing and affectionate side to her, which is what made her a good fit for Ichigo. Rukia would more so resemble Ichigo's sister in the rain, while Orihime is his lover in the rain. As the artwork earlier shows, it is Orihime who brings solace in the rain through the understanding of pain. It is Rukia who brings you on your feet when the rain brings you on your knees. But it is Orihime who follows you down to your knees to comfort you throughout it, in turn helping to heal old deep wounds, which was something Ichigo was riddled with. It is Orihime who is always there, always understanding, always there to console him. This is reflected through her powers as well, as she is the ultimate character in the support role. So to summarize, while Rukia helps others overcome the rain and their despair, it is Orihime that brings comfort in the rain, helping to heal your despair. Rukia seeks to strengthen you while Orihime seeks to heal you. Both play important parts in the development of the boy who was grieving the loss of the most important female figure in his life, the boy who was perpetually drowning in the rain. No matter how bad you feel, I will be there to heal. No matter how unskilled, 
I will help you rebuild. Go through each and every ordeal with full health, strength and zeal. With indomitable spirit be instilled so you don't end up getting killed. For you'll get stronger from the damage the storm has done and throughout it all with you even the rain can be fun. Save the boy drowning in the rain. Free him of his despair ridden chain. Guide his rainy sorrows down the drain and help the boy relieve his pain. Orohime is perhaps the character who bears the most resemblance to Masaki, Ichigo's mother. It was that type of personality and figure that Ichigo was sorely missing. Where Ichigo failed to protect his mother, he would strive to protect Orohime and all of his friends and family. Masaki's passing is what started the reign for Ichigo, but the reign was around long before Ichigo's time as well, as his parents have felt its burden as well. In the past, we see the effects of the rain through Masaki, Ishin, and Ryukin. When Ichigo would discover his past through his father, the rain was thundering down, representing the agony of Ichigo. As Ishin would start his story, the rain was shown to be around for similar reasons in the past. In the flashback, we would hear two soul reapers talking about how the clouds started to set in and how the last soul reaper died on a rainy day. Ishin would interrupt the two exclaiming that it is good to know that it is dangerous on rainy days. He would tell the two to leave if it does rain since he'd prefer to summon his own rain while he's alone. The rain in this case would be an omen for things to come. Or rather, it could have been that someone was suffering, just like Ichigo constantly is. But who would be the one suffering? The rain would pour shortly after and the Shinigami would get sliced up in a split second by white. The one suffering in this equation could have very well been white, the amalgamation of souls in a sinister white hollow clad in black, the being that would later become Ichigo's other half to his blade. We know Zangetsu hates the rain, but in this scene, the rain would accompany White, although he doesn't outright speak of it, like Zangetsu. Perhaps it was White who summons the rain. Remember earlier that the last Soul Reaper died in the rain, just like the ones who were with Ishin. Maybe he was the one truly synonymous with the rain, and that is why his roommate Zangetsu hates it so much. Maybe that is why the rain is summoned whenever Ichigo is in pain, because of White, and maybe that can explain why it was raining, as it was White who was truly suffering. On a side note, I mentioned the made up Zanpakuto release for Zangetsu earlier. As for White, if he truly is connected to the rain, I think it would have been cool if he had something acknowledging that. Maybe a release like, splatter their blood with the rain, White. Let their blood flow like the rain, White. He probably won't get a release, but it is cool to speculate. Back to the flashback. White and Ishin would clash in a quick and deadly battle, and Masaki would interrupt, saving Ishin from a point blank Sero. White would bite Masaki, and Masaki would respond with a point blank arrow of her own, defeating White. White would explode shortly after, with Ishin saving Masaki with Danku. All the while, the rain would pour. Masaki would fall fatally ill from the hollow bite, and the rain would make an appearance once again. Through the work of Urahara and the sacrifice of Ishin, Masaki was saved. She was tied to Ishin, but the sky still wept. What should have been a bright and blessed moment was the opposite for the one on the outside, drenched in the rain, Ryukin who was sinking deeper into despair. For all the moments that it rained during this flashback, there were two sides to it, one of the Soul Reapers and the other of the Quincy. This would be the same with Ishin and Ryukin's progeny, more of which I will discuss later. While Ishin was in battle with White, the Quincy were dealing with their own struggles. Masaki would feel miserable for not being able to help others. She would feel the pressure and the weight of the shackles placed on her as the last remaining member of her line, kept around only to continue on the Quincy race with Ryukin. This pressure would be felt even more so by Ryukin as well. He would go on to say, Without happiness, it is impossible to look to the future. I am not referring to our future, but that of the Quincy's. Ryukin's path was set in stone, literally to ensure the survival of the pure-blooded Quincy. All the hopes of this particular sect of Quincy all depended on Ryukin, and of course Masaki. Ryukin would make this clear when speaking to Kanae Katagiri, a mixed-blooded Quincy. Kanae would seek to console Ryukin, even though she had amassed her own feelings of sadness, as she was the one who truly cared for Ryukin. When hearing that the future of the pure-blooded Quincy is of utmost importance to Ryukin, it would bring her pain knowing that Ryukin is fated to be with Masaki. All the while, she would hide her true feelings, and this was seen through this scene, where we see a close-up of her eyes, followed by a fading transition of a raindrop, seemingly coming from her eye. The next scene where it rained was when Masaki fell ill. Ryukin would desperately try to find help, and just as he would meet up with Ishin and Urahara, the rain would start to fall. 
the future of the pure-blooded Quincy was in jeopardy, and the rain signified the desperation and despair that Ryukin felt. While Masaki's life was saved, Ryukin would be visibly shocked and relieved, but after that, the weight of his race began to crash down just like the rain. The future of his pure-blooded Quincy's was over. Ryukin was the hero parent to the Quincy. After the butchering of their race at the hands of the Shinigami, Ryukin was the next in line to protect the Quincy. He was the one who would start a new generation, a revival of the once great race. But even he couldn't protect Masaki. Go home and tell my mother that Ryukin is unqualified to protect the Quincy's were the words he'd speak to Katagiri as the rain showered down heavily. The last and final hope for the Quincy in the world of the living had failed in his duty set upon him. But Ryukin was not the only one who was shedding tears in the rain. Katagiri was there along with him, shedding a tear for his pain. Her sorrow was in Ryukin's suffering. Her sadness came from Ryukin's pain. She was able to break Ryukin out of his downward spiral. She was an antidote to Ryukin's despair. Both Ishin and Ryukin found someone to lessen the burden of the rain in this flashback. And years later, they would both lose that same person in a related event. We have seen characters drowning in the rain, but these two could have potentially had it the worst after their sons disappeared permanently. That is how they are tied together through the rain. Although we did not see the aftermath of it, as much of their past was hidden throughout the series. It is no wonder that their kids were drawn to each other despite them hiding their lineage. Both of them having insane powers definitely helped as well. In the heart of the storm, do not run. Seek shelter and look for the sun. You may come to find there is more than one. And if you found it, then you've already won. The last character I will discuss in detail is one who was molded by the rain just like Ichigo. Side by side, he bore the brunt of it similar to how Ishin and Ryukin were undoubtedly tied, just like how they suffered from the rain. That character is of course Uryu Ishida, the dragon descending from the rain, the dragon born of the rain. To understand the significance of the rain with Uryu, look no further than his name as well as his father's. Again, I don't know Japanese so these are just what I found online. Ryukin was said to mean dragon and fist in Japanese. As for Uryu, in Japanese it is said to mean rain dragon. Through Ryukin's past, we understood what the rain meant and the rain was passed on to Uryu. The weight of being the last Quincy of his line, the last remnant of his kind had become an important part of his identity. Perhaps this will be the Quincy who would break the curse of the rain, the one born to it. The one who would right the wrongs of the race and carry them into a successful future. As for their last name, Ishida roughly translates to stone rice field, thus roughly giving us the dragon who reigns on the stone rice field. It could be that the name represents the one who turns the rain into a lush, thriving rice field. Someone who transmutes the sorrows of the rain into a bountiful harvest, sowing the seeds for a better future for a nearly extinct race. In the past, Ryukin had failed in his mission of extending the full-blooded Quincy race, and his son Uryu would be born out of that failure. The rain here was not a bad thing, but the opposite. The rain of Ryukin led to Uryu being born. So just by his birth, it shows the transmutation of the rain into something better. Rather than the rain haunting you for life, here it was directed into the good rather than the bad. It was as if Uryu's birth was the antithesis to the grief of Ryukin's rain. Good came out of the rain, which was the opposite, the antithesis of what should have happened. All that said, that does not mean that Uryu did not bear the brunt of the hard-hitting rain. He was there in the rain with Ichigo, when no one else was. When Ichigo was being bombarded by the rain, Uryu was there, with grueling trials of his own. Sometimes in the same rain, he has experienced the effects of it, perhaps the most in his generation after Ichigo. Both Ichigo and Uryu have that in common, in being sons of darkness, molded by the rain. Let's go through the times when Uryu was in the rain alongside Ichigo. When Ichigo faced off against Renji and Byakuya in Karakura Town, Uryu was there soaking up the rain in defeat alongside Ichigo as his sole ally helping him. Before Ichigo's battle with him, it was Uryu who fought bravely against the Shinigami, perhaps buying enough time for Ichigo to arrive. Against Tsukushima, Ginjo and the Fullbringers, Uryu was there as well feeling the brunt of the rain, watching it tear Ichigo apart while being able to do absolutely nothing. Even after being fatally attacked by a rampaging Vasto Lorde Ichigo, Uryu would follow Ichigo to the depths of his rainy rock bottom. When all of Ichigo's friends were isolated from him in Karakura Town, only one remained on his side during the dark assault from the heavens, the dragon born in the rain. 
The episode where Ichigo found out about his mother was a rainy one, loaded with tough emotions. Ichigo found out of his past, but in the anime, we would see an exclusive scene in the rain. During that same rainfall, Uryu would be showered with, with the same rains of shock and despair, with him supposedly learning about his past and his mother, just like Ichigo. After finding out his mother's death was a result of his own kind, we would see the glimpse of the one who would recruit him into the Quincy organization known as the Wandenreich, with that character being of course, Jugram Aswaltz, I mean Hash Brown, I mean Hashwalt. No one in the Karakura gang understands what it feels like to be showered by the rain more than Uryu and Ichigo. Their ties run deep through blood and rain, while Quincy blood may course their veins, it is the rain that flows and strengthens their souls, dyeing their spirits with its color. Brothers of the rain, sons of the night, darkness is bane, bringers of the light. With some of the main characters covered, let's go through some other instances where it rained. In the Thousand Year Blood War, it rained during Yama's fight with Yuha. After Yama's Bankai, the rain started to pour. It probably had something to do with his Bankai evaporating all the water in the area or something like that. But it also could have been an omen for things to come as Yama met his end soon after. It rained hard during Yama's death and it could have been the collective consciousness, the accumulative grief and despair from all the Soul Reapers as they had just lost their leader. The rain came crashing down in his defeat, extinguishing the remnants of his hell flame and the negative emotions only got worse for all his followers. The soul society had lost its guiding flame and all the residents sunk deeper into despair and the rain did well to symbolize that. In chapter 58, The Fire, there would be a poem of Yama which says that the heart burns even though the rain falls. This could allude to Yama's will to fight on despite the rain taking over. Despite his desire to keep on fighting and his passion and rage for the Quincy, the rain was slowly taking over. The rain here would be the negative emotions tied towards the inevitable defeat. It got to a point where the soul, the heart was willing to go on, but the body could no longer, even when split in half. Yama would not desist and maybe that is what the poem is referring to. There were a few times where it metaphorically rained in Bleach, or at times where the setting can be likened to the rain. The sinister shower of blood from Unohana's Bankai is one example. The rain of this blood-like substance was a terrifying show of dark intentions. But this isn't really like the rain we talked about before. The blood coated the surrounded area with bloodthirsty malice, with violent intentions and life-threatening consequences, and it was a good show of that. After the rain of the blood, it was everywhere, but even so, this was nothing near the amount of blood shed by both of these killers. Perhaps the most terrifying showcase of rain would be the Soul King's reign of Ryatsu. This moment was not actual rain or Ryatsu, but it did feel like it in a sense. It was more of a deranged primordial rain based on a sinister cry of the sealed and mutilated god of this world. The tragic story of the Soul King can be seen in my Yuha video, so check that out for more information. When Yuha absorbed the Soul King's powers, it released a seal that was placed on the Soul King, and thus his powers manifested in the form of these dark creatures which rained down on the Soul Society. The Soul King was mutilated long ago and sealed off. Jugram would go on to say that this power would not harm the Quincy, as his enemies were the Shinigami. Through this perspective, this could be likened to the grand cry of the Soul King, who had finally been released from his shackles, and was now able to render judgment upon the Soul Reapers. This was probably more fitting to a nuclear reign, filled with emotions that we probably won't fully understand until we learn more about the Soul King. But for now, it is safe to say it was anger and vengeance or other negative emotions that drove these remnants of the Soul King. Hopefully that covered all the important moments when it rained. Let me know if I missed out any of them. This video was actually inspired by the first ever Bleach video I made that was still my favorite till this day. It was a set of monologues I made regarding the rain through the lens of Bleach, giving some words of encouragement and inspiration. Unfortunately, it was removed for copyright some time ago. With that video still being my favorite Bleach video, I will be remaking it to be better than ever, so subscribe to be posted on when that video is released. The Rain also had a spot in many chapter titles. We had Memories of the Rain in chapter 19, Unfinished July Rain in chapter 57, Memories of the Rain 2, chapters 133 to 136, and The Rain Left Off, chapter 181, Everything But the Rain, chapter 528 to 537, 
And the first OVA of Bleach was also titled Memories of the Rain, which covers the episodes where Ichigo was paying tribute to his mother slash fighting with Grand Fisher. To summarize, the rain sets the mood in Bleach and it isn't a joyous one. It is riddled with desperation and despair, grief and depression. When it rains, it pours and in Bleach, it signifies a life-changing moment, one where the character is in a grueling trial that will undoubtedly change who they are. Throughout Bleach, the rain is what connected all these characters, whether it be through despair, trauma, and so on. Through the rain, and through each other's sorrows, the characters were able to bond with each other. The rain is what helped them understand that no matter how different they are, they are still very similar, no matter the race, personality, past experiences, and so on. The rain is what binds together many of the Bleach characters. Despite the rain being a grim omen, it doesn't mean it's for the worst. For the sun shines bright after the storm, and it was the rain that brought upon the most growth for the beloved Bleach characters. 